Well then, Bunny. Yes. Let's talk. Let's talk about books. You see, people <laughs> always say, "Hey, do you work here?" To which I say, "Yes, I do work here. How can I help you?" To which they say, "Oh, no, I, I'm I'm just looking for a book. Never mind." To which I say, "Oh no, ma'am, I do I do work here." What can I help you with? To which they say, Oh no, young man, I need someone who knows kids' books, so I'll just find a young woman to help me. To which I interrupt with, Oh no, that's still me. <laughs> I know kids' books better than anyone here in the store. What can I help you find? To which they say, Oh, nothing. Uh, they say nothing is what they say, and they stutter and panic because <laughs> they are a 69-year-old MAGA grandmother from Kent, Ohio, and I'm a long-haired minority with a very small amount of power. <laughs> so so they stutter and panic, and the pa their panicked tone continues until I finally calm it down with, you see, I have five kids at home. And now the customer warms up. Now the customer is excited. Now the customer is ready to ask me a question. Why? Because, because my five kids plays into their inherent racist stereotypes. And yes. the question they ask is, are you Catholic? Oh, oh, no, no, no. He, see, he knows kids books so well because he has so many kids. And he has so many kids. See, a lot of his people have a lot of kids. <laughs> Because they're Catholic, well, you, know, you know, a lot of a lot of your people have a lot of have so many kids because oh, okay. they're Catholic. Yeah. Oh, so I'm looking for Junie B. Jones books. So do you have any of those? And so I take them to the section where we have the Junie B. Jones books. And then I go into my receiving department, put on an Adam Warrock song and just cry. <laughs> it hurts it hurts funny i i i understand i completely hurt, understand hurt you but they can still hurt you yeah people also say hey write what you know and what i know is that after 17 plus years of working at a bookstore people do not know the difference between bible translations <laughs> People do not know the difference between Bible translation. Uh, uh, you got any Bibles? <laughs> yeah, we we've got a we've got a big Bible section over here. Is there any specific one you're looking for? Oh, I'm I'm just looking for a Bible. <laughs> oh yeah, I was just wondering about translation. You know, we've got uh, you know the the King James, the New King James, the New International Version, the New Living Translation, the English Standard Version, the New Revised Standard Version. Well, look, look, look. I'm just looking for uh for for like good good sized Bible with uh. <laughs> it's gotta with, have uh, some heft to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, one of the, one of them Bibles with the uh, where the Word of God is like in red, and I'm like, okay, well, you just described ninety percent of all Bibles, so uh, we're whittling it down little by little. It's it, the thing that upsets me is that um, as a Christian, your entire belief system, your entire belief. Uh, your all of your beliefs, your entire uh, belief system mm -hmm. is based on this one book. <laughs> so you would think that you would get to know the book. You would think <laughs> you would know the t different types of translations and uh, where the book originated and the history and the things that were in the book that were cut out. But no, no, no clue at all. That's why. The, the every week, all of the Bibles are are carefully um, shrink wrapped with plastic, and you find them all over the store because no one knows the difference between Bibles. So I just have to unwrap each one and look and see. It's like a, I want a candy and I want just like a good chocolate. 
So I'm at the supermarket. I better open up all of these candy bars. <laughs> just to make sure I get, like, I just want a good chocolate one with a good creamy center. It, it, <laughs> is that a Snickers? I don't know. I better open it up and check. It's just, anyway, it upsets me. Yeah. What I also know, what are you looking for, Maxwell? What sign? What? Her, oh, you made me drop. You made me spill this drink. Get, get me, get me a paper towel. Get me a paper towel. You're my paper towel person. Cause you made me drop this. Get me a paper towel, please. Oh, I dropped it on my tie, man. Okay, thank you, but get me more than one square. I appreciate you trying to save paper towels. I guess I, I don't know. Are we in a recession? But. <laughs> If you could give me more than one square, I would appreciate that. Give me three squares. That's a little bit better. Thank you, Maxwell, for getting me paper towels. And now this is wet, but that's fine. We'll just look past that. So (laughs) I don't know where the sign is, Maxwell. I don't know where the sign is that was on your toy. Anyway, what I know, what I also know, is that I have been a loyal and viciously scatterbrained employee at my local bookstore for over 17 years now. Wow! 17 years! Yes. That is a long time. If my bookselling career were a person, then it would be too old for Judge Roy Moore! (laughs) Oh, 17, slow down there. Yeah, we don't want to be getting all carried away. Yeah. Oh, you're a grandma. (laughs) And you know, Bunny. Yes. If I could have one wish this holiday season, it would be for all the children of the world to join hands and sing a song of harmony and peace. And you know, Bunny, if I could have two wishes this holiday season, the first, of course, would be for all the children of the world to join hands and sing in a song of harmony and peace. Yes. And the second wish would be for Roy Moore to spend the rest of his life rotting in a prison where numerous gangs of varying ethnicities took turns beating and or raping him. Yeah. A lot of people wish that, I think. Hmm? A lot of people wish that, but I I still can't get over the people who are like, anybody except a Democrat. Yeah. And you can't help be like, what the serious fuck is wrong with you? We're talking about a fucking pedophile here. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're not, we're not talking about, Rob Lowe's sex tape, you know? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rob Lowe is amazing because because people nowadays say, Oh, my goodness, I'm a Kardashian. My sex tape was leaked. Oh, man, I hate that. <laughs> yeah. Don't question don't question uh, uh, that that this sex tape, which was totally leaked, has been published by a major uh, uh, porn studio, uh, and it's amazingly well lit. <laughs> uh, the cover has my face on it. Oh no, my sex tape got leaked. Don't question where the money, where the where the proceeds for this tape is going. Just pity me because my sex tape was leaked. <laughs> Rob Lowe literally had it leaked. Yes. <laughs> like, literally had this leaked back when that wasn't just a a fake statement to say. Yeah. So. Yeah, he, he, he certainly did. And he, he got out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if, if the thing that pissed me off is that so many of Roy Moore's uh, supporters were like, oh, well, these. These attacks are unsubstantiated. There's no truth to these rumors. But here's a bit of truth 
that you can uh, find out yourself. Uh, a Christian company did a documentary about Judge Roy Moore yeah. um, back when he was uh, saying no to uh, Christian to, to gay marriage. And in this video that Christians made, he was talking about meeting his uh, beloved, his lovely wife. And in the documentary, he does say that, oh, I remember the, the first day I met my wife. She was across the room at a party and I just saw her and she was just the most beautiful woman I ever saw. And I went to one of the party guests and I said, what is her name? And they said her name. And I said, oh, I'm going to remember that name because. That woman is just beautiful. She just took my breath away. <laughs> eight years later, eight years later, uh, we were introduced to each other again. And I remembered her from that party. And I said, I saw you at a party eight years ago. And we just hit it off. And a year later, we were married. <laughs> that was basically a story that Roy Moore said in a documentary about his life. Now, if you go to Google, if you, if you, if you Google him, if you Wikipedia him, uh, it's public record that Roy Moore's wife is actually half of Roy Moore's age. And if you do the math, uh, they got married when uh, Roy Moore's wife was only 22 years old. Of, of course. So if you do the math on that, if you do the math on that, yeah, they got married a year after they were dating. And then Roy Moore saw her at a party eight years before that. Mm -hmm. Gives you, a, you know, you could do the math there on, on, on your own as to when Roy Moore first saw his wife. <laughs> That's a Christian fact right there. Yeah. Well, wait a second. Christian and fact. I know. There are some problems there. Yeah. There's some problems right there. Also, just to be clear, this opening isn't super long because I don't have a lot planned. This opening is super long because it's funny as hell and because I don't have a lot planned. <laughs> cool. But it's not because I don't have a lot planned first. Yeah. It's first because it's funny as hell and secondly because I don't have a lot planned. <laughs> and as such, I really do have my fingers on the pulse of the book world and I am here to rub my fingers all over your chests, um, uh, not literally, figuratively, with this week's painfully awkward installment of Notes from the Bookstore! <laughs> Bunny, yes. this, pa this past week has been hell on earth for me. What hell has gone on? on Is it just the whole Christmas season thing or I'm getting a crazy amount of books. I am getting a crazy amount of stuff. I'm still getting 120, 140, 180 uh, boxes a day. The only difference is, is that we are getting so busy, so ridiculously busy, even on like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that they are just, I am spending Two times more time on the floor as a bookseller helping customers than I was last year. Last really? year, I'm spending most of my time just in the back, listening to my weird music and doing my job. But this year, we're just a little bit more short staffed. And so they need me on the floor and I'm spending so much time on the floor. And so I'm not getting a lot done in receiving and it's it's I, I am not looking forward to the next two days because the next two days are going to be so ridiculously busy. And yet tomorrow, which will be the last delivery day before Christmas, uh, I'm scheduled to get about 180 boxes. Ooh. I don't know what I'm going to do with those 180 boxes because we'll be so busy. There's no way I'll be able to. I'm going to have like the smallest amount of time to actually receive any of those boxes i'll be spending most of my time on the floor yeah so, so yeah not looking forward to that it's just it's been very difficult it has been very difficult i i, I don't have any help right now it's basically just me receiving everything and trying to get it all onto the floor mm -hmm. and it's just i've been at my wits end i've been drinking a lot more energy drinks and just trying to stay wired and also last year 
we canceled the last story time before Christmas. The reason is because um, Black Friday is known as like the busiest shopping day, but it's the busiest shopping day in terms of um, foot traffic. Yeah. The busiest shopping day in terms of uh, money spent is always the, 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 the Friday and Saturday before Christmas. And this is going to be especially more busy this weekend because Christmas is on a Monday. So, so that just brings an extra amount of pressure to it. Yeah. And so this Saturday is literally just going to be a b- bomb dropping hell on earth. And yet, uh, the corporate uh, head honchos, they didn't cancel story time. So it's going to be the busiest shopping day in the history of ever, and I have to read a book about Santa's magic key. So I'm really excited. <laughs> really excited about that. Apparently, it, 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 if the way Santa gets into your house, if you don't have a chimney, is Santa has a magic key. And what I But what I tell kids is, first thing, Santa checks for a chimney. Yeah. If you don't have a chimney, Chan- Santa checks for an open window. If if you don't have an open window, Santa checks for a security system. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to see if there are any windows he can sort of jimmy open. If that doesn't work, Santa will build you a chimney. <laughs> Then go down the chimney, leave the presents, then go up the chimney, and then destroy the chimney. <laughs> and if all of that doesn't work, he has a magic key, and that's what the story's going to be about. Yeah. So excited about that. <laughs> that's. I don't know how I'm going to do this story time when we're going to be ridiculously, like, you, kids, I don't know how you're going to get here. You might have to... You might have to park in Dallas, Texas and walk. Yeah. To our that, store. That sounds like a big possibility. Yeah, that might be the only possibility. So so that's enough of how much work sucks. This week bunny. This week. Very excited about this. I have for you. Uh-huh. What? What? What do I have? I, what do I, I have? I, I, I don't know. Herpes. Let me tell you what I have. What I have. I have an opportunity. Uh huh. Once in a lifetime opportunity for you, Bunny, for you <laughs> to get on the ground floor. Okay. Exciting. Can't fail business opportunity, okay? All right. This is a must invest opportunity that you cannot afford to miss. Oh, 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 what is this? What is this? What is it? Let me tell you what <laughs> what this is. This is uh, getting Apple stock when it was a dollar a share. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, some guy saying, I've just invented a phone that's smart. A smart phone. Yes. This is the freaking clapper. <laughs> This is some crazy guy saying, hey, I, I know this is weird, but I made this statue. And if you shove these seeds into it and water it, it's like Garfield is growing grass hair. I call it a <laughs> Chia pet. <laughs> Do you think people would want to buy this for, say, the next 50 decades? Yeah. Clap on, clap off the clapper. <clears throat> so, Bunny, let me tell you. My amazing super boffo idea. Yeah. What is the single hottest musical of the last 10 years, Bunny? No, not the SpongeBob SquarePants musical currently playing on Broadway. (laughs) Well, Jeannie had said, said Les Miserables. The last 10 years. That was a while. That was like 80s. There were Seinfeld episodes about Les Miserables. (laughs) I remember the Master of the House episode. No, I'm talking about of the last 10 years. But no, I want to pause this and talk about the SpongeBob SquarePants musical currently playing on Broadway. Okay. Because surprisingly, people are giving it wonderful reviews. Really? That is is surprising. I am surprised. 
they interviewed the the show head, the head of the show, the the the, the musicals creator, Puba, on NPR Saturday. And there's this old guy who does NPR uh, uh, morning news on Saturday, and uh, I consider this like the greatest review. The old guy was basically like, "I've I've I've got to tell you, after watching this uh, musical of yours." I really love SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> like a, for like a sixty-year-old man to say that, like, okay, this has to be a wonderful musical. Yeah. But here's the thing that gets me about the SpongeBob SquarePants musical. Okay, here's the thing that gets me. This is a really weird musical, and the sets are really bizarre. And the person who they got to be the showrunner for the SpongeBob SquarePants musical originally said no to Nickelodeon because she said. I'm not going to make some musical where there's people in giant foam heads. I'm just not doing that. (laughs) So what they actually have is like a very minimalist, realist take on on the SpongeBob characters. So like uh, the guy who's playing Patrick Starr isn't some guy in a big giant Patrick outfit. He's just a fat guy in pink. (laughs) Okay. And so SpongeBob is just some like hyperactive, vaguely gay-seeming young man with a high voice in pants and a suit with a, a shirt with a tie. You know, it, it's a very minimalist approach, and it, they had some interview with one of the cast members where they weren't sure if people were going to really take to these characters, but then after the first preview, they heard one of the kids talking to their mom as they left the theater, and the kid said to the mom, Mommy, I'm so glad I got to see what SpongeBob looks like in real life. Oh, no. They're like, okay, that's adorable. That's kind of adorable. And um, they I, they actually performed at this year's um, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And I'm like, oh, my God, this looks horrible. I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine that anyone would want to see this. And then we got the, 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 the like, the, the, the cast album. We got yeah. it at work, you know. And here's. Here's the thing. I'm pretty sure this is a first ever, okay? Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is a first ever. All of the music for the SpongeBob SquarePants musical has been written by a number of famous people. You had mentioned this before. I've never seen this before. Here are some of the people who wrote uh, music for the SpongeBob musical. They might be giants. Brian E. Eno... Jonathan Colton, Aerosmith, Plain White Tees, Cindy Lauper, The Flaming Lips, and David Bowie right before he freaking died. I'm, 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 I'm not buying Aerosmith. I'm not buying that. Aerosmith doesn't even write songs for fucking Aerosmith anymore. Hmm. Let me Let me explain that. I actually wasn't sure if I was going to say Aerosmith. But the but the song was written by Steven Tyler and Joe Perry. Yeah. And in my mind, that's basically Aerosmith. Yeah. Like, no one's like, oh, Aerosmith. I love that drummer. Uh, I believe his name is Fat Guy, who is the drummer from Aerosmith. <laughs> yes. Like, no one, no one is. So basically, Joe Perry, Steven Tyler. Okay, that's Aerosmith. So I just said Aerosmith, but Joe Perry and Steven Tyler wrote the song. But the thing is, is that I can't think, and I've been asking some people I know who know theater, have there been any other musicals out there where the music were, each individual song was written by a different famous person or famous group? And all they can say is that um, there are jukebox musicals out there, and there are jukebox musicals like uh, Rock of Ages, which have different songs that have been written by different famous people, but those are songs that already existed. These are songs that were written specifically for the SpongeBob musical. Yeah. And they went to David Bowie and said, okay, it's act two, and a volcano is about to explode. We need a song for Patrick to sing, and take <laughs> it away, David Bowie, on his deathbed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is historical. Whether we want it to be or not, I'm pretty sure this is a historic musical. Well, you could say that about just about everything these days. <laughs> well, it's it's historical. <laughs> yeah. But no. The um what's the question? Um uh the question on hand is the the most what what 
is the single hottest musical of the last 10 years? And of course the answer is Hamilton. Yes. The story of one of our nation's founders, but told by an all black, all minority cast smash hit. Massive success. Hamilton, I dare say, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, hell, five freaking years ago, I dare, uh, I dare say that the majority of Americans didn't know jack shit about Alexander Hamilton. Uh, I did, and I still think he was a douchebag, so. Yeah, but yeah. like, I don't, but, but it's different now. People are more aware of Alexander Hamilton now than they were before. Oh, yeah. You know, but that's the power and the popularity of this musical. It changed our nation's concept of history, and it's amazing. Now, Bunny. Yes. At this juncture, you might be wondering, what does this have to do with notes from the bookstore? But stick with me here, because I'm just about to get to it, okay? All right. You see, Bun Dependence Day, the musical Hamilton was written by Mr. Lynn manuel Miranda. He wrote Hamilton after the success of his first Broadway play, In the Heights. In the Heights, very successful, won a number of Tonys. Best musical, um, uh, won a number of Tonys, or, or as I call them, Anthony's. Yes. Because I don't know the awards that well, so I'm not going to use the informal nickname of Tony. That's that's a that's a, a a prudent choice. In the Heights, Lin Manuel Miranda's first musical won a number of Anthony's, but uh, you gotta realize writing a Broadway play and then performing it and then getting it to Broadway and then doing it there for a year or two and then taking it out on tour. Not to mention writing a, a musical from scratch that just takes so much time that's six or seven or eight whole years of your life that are mm -hmm. just absolutely gone you know yeah so after uh uh in the heights lin-manuel miranda he has no idea what he's going to do next so he he goes to the beach he he takes a vacation with his family and he takes with him a bit of light beach reading but this is MacArthur Genius Grant recipient, Tony Award winning uh, genius, Mr. Lin Manuel Miranda. So for Lin Manuel Miranda, apparently, light beach reading, with finger quotes, is the super long and incredibly dry nonfiction book Alexander Hamilton by Pulitzer Prize winning historian and author Ron Chernow. <laughs> So, to summarize, Lin-Manuel Miranda got a big, bland, boring Ron Chernow book and turned it into a culturally redefining musical sensation. Yes. So, so, Ron Chernow has a brand new book out. Yeah. It just came out. It's a biography about Ulysses S. Grant that's somehow even longer than his book on Alexander Hamilton. Here's my pitch. We write the musical now. I think so. I think we, we should get on it. Immediately start writing a musical about Ron Chernow's book, Ulysses S. Grant. I want to call it Grant! Exclamation point jazz hands. Is what I want to call it. <laughs> I I like it. I like it a lot. Because we, we've already seen that someone, that a minority with the last name Miranda, uh, it, we've already seen that it's possible for a minority to get a long, boring Ron Chernow book about a historical figure and turn it into a musical. So we need to get this brand new Ron Chernow book. It doesn't even matter who it's about. We need to write the musical now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll have you know that for the past two weeks, I've been working on it. You have? Good. Yes. My brand new musical, Grant! Exclamation point jazz hands. <laughs> now, uh, there's a slight problem, just a tiny problem, a, a wee, a, a, just the tiniest little bit of difficulty in the fact that I can't write music. However... I'm not letting that stop me from writing this musical. Good. Good. That is that is probably the most Woodian statement I've made of in 2017. <laughs> I'm not going to let the the fact that I have no 
talent or experience in this stop me from doing it. So I don't have musical ability and I don't have a uh, songwriting experience and I don't, I just don't know how to write music. But one thing I do have is a lifetime love appreciation and respect for the musical genius that is Mr. Weird Al Yankovic. See, I was going to say chutzpah. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. chutzpah, and chutzpah. Yeah. Of Mr. Weird Al Yankovic. So this is what I'm doing. I'm getting popular Broadway show tunes and rewriting them to be about Ron Chernow's book about Ulysses S. Grant. I think I've, we've got a uh, huge I, hit. I, I think you're really on to something. Uh, the first one you might know from the musical Fame. I'm trying to get popular, popular musical numbers and turn them into being about Ulysses S. Grant. So this is the first one. It's from the musical Fame. It, it's going to be our title track. Also, it's it's also possibly important to note. I know nothing about Ulysses S. Grant. I haven't read the book. That 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 shouldn't matter. The book is like a freaking brick. Like if if you bought enough of Ron Chernow's new book about Grant, you could build a house with it. That's how huge this freaking book is. It's massive. It's <laughs> like it's it's like a it's like a a Galapagos turtle had sex with a phone book. <laughs> this new Ron Cherno book and I don't have time to read that so um, my songs for the Grant musical which again is entitled Grant exclamation point jazz hands yes you know it's not huge on facts but facts we are in a post fact age yeah yeah we can fix it in post mm -hmm. so so this is the, the title track. Really proud of it. Grant! I'm gonna win the Civil War! And my first name is Ulysses Grant! <laughs> my middle name is S! I didn't bother to look it up, look it up, look it up, look it up. <laughs> so that's the title track. I'm also working on kind of a different one. This is a really sad song that happens during a Civil War battle. Yeah. It, except uh, it, it, I try and I, 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 I've picked a popular song to try and a happy song to try and make it of a less depressing battle. So, yeah. so this is uh, from Oklahoma. <laughs> Okay. It, 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 the wording isn't perfect, but I'm working on it. Gettysburg, where the wind comes sweeping from the corpses. <laughs> All I've got so far on that one, but it's a work in progress. We're working on it. There's another well, you, you one. Need a, you need a good couple of uptunes. You know. Yeah. Speaking of uptunes, there's another song that I have. Eleanor is crying with happiness over my songs. Good. That's she nice. heard me singing my songs and she's like, oh, these are great. I'm crying because these <laughs> songs are so good. There's another up song that I have and it's um, it's Ulysses S. Grant and it's Robert E. Lee and they're on opposite sides of the stage oh. talking to their soldiers about the last battle that they had. That 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 and that's that's gripping. Yeah. Gripping. And so 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 they're talking to the soldiers about the, the last big battle, and so it's it's sort of like a Civil War days drifting away to uh oh those civil war nights <laughs> and all the soldiers are like oh well oh well oh well uh huh you know <laughs> Tell me more, tell me more. Did you kill any slaves? So <laughs> you know, it's kind of a kind of a happy thing because you need Robert E. Lee in there if it's going to be 
a musical about Ulysses S. Grant. You need Robert E. Lee. You it, need you need everybody who was uh, part of the chess set. Yeah, from the Franklin yeah. Mint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I thought that those three would be good for my pitch, but then Natasha said, "If you're getting songs from popular musicals, you need one from Rent." Yeah, which which I agreed to. But then I'm like, okay, I think I saw Rent once, and I don't remember shit. <laughs> what was Rent even about? About these, uh, the only thing that I can think of when when someone says Rent, all I can think of is a uh, uh, Team America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. So what I'm working on is uh what what do you want me to do? Untie your shoe? Okay, I heard tie my shoe, but then I got confused because it was already tied. And uh, you've got like a like a four knot. You got like a four knotter on this one. It's quite impressive. You've got like four bows. It's it, it, nice work. Man. Thank you. Nice work. <laughs> the untie your other one. Okay. Well, it's not a one first, but two first. Oh, you said uh, untie my shoe. I didn't hear untie my shoes. So I wasn't sure. He could be the next Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Double the flavor. There you are. So so my uh, fourth song from my Grant musical yeah. comes from Rant, and it comes from, as far as I re- recall, the only... As far as I can recall, this is the only song in all of Rent. <laughs> okay. Anybody thinks it's worth a damn? Yeah, the only one anyone thinks is worth a damn. Uh, 525,600 soldiers. That's how many people may have died in the Civil War. Because again, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know the facts about the Civil War, but I'm not letting that stop me from writing the Civil War musical. And, and I really don't think you should. I don't see yeah. the reason why you would. Yeah, because it's not about the facts. No. It's a writing this musical now before Lin-Manuel Miranda gets bored again. <laughs> and goes He's, to the fucking beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need to write this musical now and claim the rights to it before Lin- Lin-Manuel Miranda gets bored and goes to the bookstore again. Mm-hmm. So be sure and look for my new musical entitled Grant exclamation point jazz hands. It's going to be coming to Broadway soon. And then we do the book and then we do the movie rights. And yeah. then suddenly everyone's going to be taught. Then that's how I get on drunk history. You know what we do? Okay. Stay uh-huh. with me here. All right. Just like SpongeBob square pants. Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll get a bunch of different writers each to write a line. Ooh, that's a good one. We'll get like Stephen King and J.K. Rowling, and that's all I know. I don't work in a bookstore. So, so all of the <laughs> so all of the lines of the play, like here's the scene where Ulysses S. Grant and Robert E. Lee are meeting at the Appomattox Courthouse, and Ulysses S. Grant walks up to Robert E. Lee and says, How did you get this number? <laughs> mm-hmm. And then Robert E. Lee goes, Stop emailing me. <laughs> and yeah, it's like, ooh, that line was from J.K. Rowling. Yeah. That stop emailing me. And then Ulysses S. Grant slams his fist on the table and says, you have been blocked on Twitter. <laughs> then they go into a song. It this is all coming along great. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait until you get the restraining order. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll wait until <laughs> I get the restraining order. And that from is who? It from Grant. He's dead. This is as Grant's uh, gone. Stephen King. No, Stephen King wouldn't restrain order you. That didn't come out right. No, he's going to write a line for us. Yeah, in the form of a restraining order. <laughs> um, 
We can work yeah, it in we, somewhere. <laughs> well, Stephen King is really going to help me out, but that's only because I I have eight balls. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I can get him. I'm pretty sure I can get him. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's that was his going price. <laughs> yeah. That was that's that's how that's how we got uh, Emilio Estevez in Maximum Overdrive. <laughs> oh, that was great! God, <laughs> I love that stupid movie so much. Sorry. And that is it from note from the bookstore this week. We're keeping it light because working retail during Christmas makes you seriously debate cobaining yourself. <laughs> yes. And remember, boys and girls and gender wild cards, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases. And all you have to do is please buy some of our clearance items. I have about 40 boxes in receiving of clearance items that I don't have the room to put on the floor because no one's buying clearance items. Please <laughs> buy some clearance stuff. It's been I know it's been 50% off for the last three and a half months, but I swear it'll be going 75% off one of these years. Yes. <laughs> so please buy some of our clearance items, please. Then we'll give you 10% off of all of your purchases of $3,000 or more. <laughs> And cut. Cut on that. 